Welcome to Corinth Baptist Church. Uh, we're hoping that uh, this will be a blessing to you during this time. Uh, we're praying for you and your family, our community, and our world uh, during this extraordinary time. Uh, today we're going to be talking about John chapter 15 and how if we abide in Christ, uh, we can be fruitful. And our desire is that Christ will be magnified, uh, that Christ will be the core of all that we do, and that as believers, uh, we will be fruitful in this world. Uh, sharing the gospel and building each other up. So welcome, and I hope that uh, this will be a blessing to you today. God bless you.
21 says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, or the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. Lord, thank you so much for your truth that you gave David, Lord, as he struggled in the wilderness many, many years ago. Uh, Lord, he was uh, reminded, Lord, of your faithfulness, your deliverance. Lord, we thank you that we can trust in you today. We thank you that, uh, Lord, we do not have to trust in ourselves. Uh, we do not have to trust, uh, Lord, in the uh, reliability of things around us because we know that you are the source of life, and the source of comfort, and the source of provision. Lord, we look to you. Lord, we do pray for our church family. We pray for all those around us uh, during this time. We're given comfort, given peace, given strength. For your glory, in Christ's name.
that even in an empty room still carries power to them. In your name we pray. Amen. John chapter 15, verse 15 is our text. John chapter 15. We have looked uh, for several uh, messages on uh, the title and the topic of uh, lessons before leaving. And it started in John chapter 13 and the lessons that Jesus taught the disciples before uh, he uh, went to the cross and died for our sin and rose again the third day and he ascended into heaven. But before all of that happened, he gave lessons to his disciples. As we looked at chapter 13, the lesson was to serve and love one another. That as Jesus left the earth, he left with us the command to serve one another and love one another as he has loved us. In chapter 13, he also told us, in chapter 14, he told us to live for eternity. Not to live for this earth, but to live for for eternity, and that he was sending a helper, and that helper was the Holy Spirit that would remind us of all truth and empower us for the days to come. But maybe they were thinking like maybe we're thinking today, how am I going to make it? How am I going to make it in this time? How am I going to live the Christian life? How am I going to be a fruitful believer in these days of turmoil? in these days of uncertainty. Well, Jesus gave the answer here in chapter 15 by saying this simply, live in me. Abide in me. And he used the illustration of a vine and its branches. He doesn't say, live near me. Or just simply live like me. He says, dwell within me. Verse 1, he says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. I want you to see here three things quickly. First of all, I want you to see the Lord is the vine and the vine dresser that prepares us to grow. Secondly, the Lord is the vine and the vine dresser that provo provokes us to grow. And then third, He expects us to grow. Jesus says, I am the true vine. I am the real source of life. And my Father is the vine dresser. He is the gentle farmer. He is the one that coaxes growth out of the vine. The vine is this gnarly piece of wood that's often twisted and kind of ugly. We have some in our side yard that are vines that, that uh, grow up in the trees. But that, that vine comes out of the ground and it's twisted and it's mangled. But deep down under the ground, that vine is going toward water. It is the source of life. If you cut a branch away from that vine, it will die immediately. It may be green for a few days, but after a while, it will not grow. See, Jesus understood that as a believer, in order for us to be profitable and fruitful, if you will, we had to remain in Him. We had to seek Jesus on a daily basis as our source of life. That is more than just justification by faith. 
That is more than just coming to Christ and accepting Him as our Lord and Savior. That is abiding in Him daily for our source of life. Listen to what John chapter 17 says as Jesus prays for every believer. John chapter 17 and verse 13. He says this, But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of this world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, so as I am not of the world, sanctify them, set them apart by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified by truth. So here, here's, the, here's the source of life. Jesus, as the living word of God, brings us life through his death and his resurrection. But his word, his guidance, that the word that he has revealed to us is our continued source of life that sanctifies us in him. What is your source of life? What do you trust in the most? What are you relying on? There are people relying on all kinds of things now to get them through uh, these difficult days. I went by the grocery store today and saw all the empty shelves of people who are just you know, have, have come in and, and they, they're stocking up on stuff. And they're, they're trusting in, uh, in things that the government or uh, the community or the trucks going up and down the road. And I thought to myself, do we really understand what it takes for a truckload of things to get from wherever it's coming from, the farm, uh, the ship, or whatever, to the grocery store? Do we really understand all the processes to get our food to us or our supplies to us? Do we really understand what it takes to be fruitful as a believer. That it took the death of Jesus Christ to justify us by grace and forgive our sin. But it also took the work of the Holy Spirit in Jesus Christ to set us apart and to set us on a new plane where He is our life source. He is our way of living. He is our way of of fruitfulness. The Lord is the vine and the vine dresser that prepares us to grow, but He also provokes us to grow. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, He takes away. Now, I have a number uh, beside that in, in my text, and, and I'll bring that out in just a moment, but He said that every branch that bears fruit, He prunes. If you have a number there beside the text, in your Bible, if you look in the middle column, it also says an alternate translation is to lift up. So there, there are two things that the vine dresser did to help a branch to bear fruit. The first danger of a branch is it, is it grew was to grow, it falls and grows toward the ground as it gets heavier. And it gets in the mud and it, begin, it, it holds moisture and it begins to mildew. So the vine dresser would come and lift up that branch and tie it off the ground and clean its leaves off. And because it was lifted up toward the sun and because it was lifted up off the ground, then it would become healthy again and it would bear fruit. So when it says here, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, really we could say he lifts up out of the mud, he takes it away from what is causing it to mildew and what is causing it to be hindered in its growth. And then he says, uh, those who are bearing fruit, he prunes it. He cuts things away, the bad wood. He, he cuts the extra wood away so that it will bear more fruit. One farm report said it this way, because of the grape's tendency to grow vigorously, the, the vine can become so dense that the sun cannot reach areas of development. A lot of wood must be cut away every year 
in order for the vine to bear fruit. Here's the question that we must ask ourselves. What is bringing rot to our lives? What is causing us to fall toward the ground instead of being lifted toward the sun? What is causing mildew and rot in our spiritual life, so to speak? What worldliness, what sin is causing us to fall toward the ground instead of being lifted toward heaven? Secondly, what needs to be cut away from our lives? What is blocking the sun, the S-O-N, from our lives? You know, I was thinking about that yesterday as, as I was reading and, and praying. What if God is using this time to clean us and trim away the things that block the sun in our lives and in our church and in our ministries? I do not believe that God causes evil and I do not believe God is the, the source of this virus. But I do know that God is powerful and that He uses everything for our good as a believer. That's a promise that we have. That He will prune us. That's a painful thing to think about it. That He will cut away things in our life that hinder us from growing. That He will clean us. We have that promise that God will work to bring about things for our benefit, even in the midst of evil. What if God is using this time in your life to clean you and to trim away the things that have blocked Him from being visible in your life? Are you fellowshipping with God as you once were? Do you feel far away from God? Are you bearing fruit? Is there patience in your life and peace, loving kindness, the fruits of the Spirit, the love and the joy that was once there, is it still there? What if, like a vine, or like that branch, we have fallen toward the ground, and we've let dirt into our life that is blocking our growth? See, the Lord is the vine and the vine dresser that provokes us to grow. He coaxes us, He lifts us up, and cuts away the bad wood. That's why in the, in the book of Ephesians it tells us this about our spiritual growth and the purpose of God in our life. He says this in, in verse 8, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, and not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are His workmanship. See, that's the, the promise we have as believers is that we are a workmanship of God. We are being recreated for His glory. And we are created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Just like a farmer looks out across that field and across that vineyard, and he sees that things need to be done. God is looking out across about our lives and He sees the dirt. He sees the wood that needs to be cut away. And He is purposefully working that we would be more like Jesus. That we would be sanctified by grace just as we were justified by grace. If we're going to be fruitful, if we're going to make it in these days for the glory of God, we must understand that the vine dresser prepares us to grow. He sets us apart to Himself and He provokes us to grow. And He is cleaning us as we rely on Him. Well, what is the expectation? Well, the expectation is that if God is doing this in our life, that we will grow. The Lord expects us to grow. He says, I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I am Him bears much fruit. That is what God expects. Without me, you can do nothing. How much of our efforts, how much of, uh, of what we do is about us and relying on us and trying to rely on our own power 
And Jesus is saying to us today, rely on me, live in me, dwell in me, and you will bear much fruit. There's a vineyard in Germany in the Rhine Valley. And it's in, in a really in, in a part of the world that you wouldn't expect a vineyard to do very well in. And people have wondered why does this vineyard seem to do so well in harsh conditions? Well, they began to study this vineyard and they found that it's so old that the vines are down way down deep in the ground and they travel toward the Rhine River. And no matter what happens in that area, they always have a water source because the vines are interconnected and connected to the Rhine River. That's what our life can look like. As we submit to the Holy Spirit, as we submit to the Lordship of Christ, we find that when we dwell in Him, we will bear much fruit. Wilkerson said this in his commentary on this passage. He said once he was talking to one of his friends about his Christian growth. And he said, I, I just feel like the Lord is wanting me to do more. And he said, as my friend began to ask me questions, it dawned upon me what my friend was trying to get through my mind. God doesn't want me to do more. He wants more of me. That's what it's all about in John chapter 15. See, a branch that is doing everything on its own will wither and die. Jesus wants more of us. As we submit to Him and His Spirit and His Word. Notice what He says in verse 7. If you abide in Me and My words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Why? Because if we are dwelling in Christ, we will want what Christ wants. We will be praying about what Christ is desiring. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. That is the results that God is looking for in our life. That is what He is expecting from us, that we would bear fruit. Someone made a comment recently as churches began to have to isolate their buildings because of the virus. Now, now we will see the church outside the walls. That's very true, but that's what we should be every day anyway. That's what we should be on a daily basis. We should be the church outside the walls. And what should the church look like outside of the walls? We have a great opportunity before us to share the gospel like never before. To show peace in a fearful world. To show love in a hateful world. To show grace in a graceless world. To show the power of God in a powerless society. How do we do that? We do that by abiding in Christ. Living in Him. And the result of that is this. God will be glorified and people will know that you're a follower of Jesus. My question is this. Does your life, does my life reflect that today? Does my life reflect the glory of God? And when people look at me, do they see that I'm a follower of Jesus? If they don't see that, then we are not abiding in Christ. He is the vine dresser. He is the vine. He is the source of life and the source of growth. He is the one that prepares us to grow and provokes us to grow and expects us to grow. Dwell in Him and you will see the fruit that you never thought was possible. The Holy Spirit will empower you to have love and joy and peace and patience kindness and goodness and gentleness and self-control. All those things 
that the world is struggling to have right now, you can have through the Spirit of God and the Word of God. God bless you. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you so much for the opportunity to look at your Word. Lord, we know that we fall short. Lord, of our responsibility in this passage, and that is to submit to you. Lord, you have not fallen short of us. You have been faithful. You provide your word. You provide your spirit. You provide the empowerment to live for you on a daily basis. Lord, so often, like a branch off of the vine, Lord, we try to do things on our own and we fail. But Lord, today I pray that you will make your power known for your people. As they go from this time to glorify you supremely. Lord, to live for you in a way that will show that they're followers of Christ. We ask these things for your glory. In Christ's name. Amen.